Forbes produces a list of the richest people in the world every year. And every country has a list like that. I'm sure you have in the UK a list of the richest people every year. We have a list in Switzerland of the richest people. Germany has a list. France has a list. And the question is, does money generate happiness? Does money generate a good life? And this is a question that has been solved. It has been researched and it has pretty much been solved. And there is a correlation between money and happiness. Money makes very happy, makes for a very good life if you have no money. If you're poor, every additional pound of income has a huge effect on your well-being. A huge effect. And then it decreases and eventually you'll reach a level in the US it's a household income of between 70 and 80,000 uh, US dollars per year. Uh, in the UK, it might be roughly about 80,000 maybe or 70,000 pounds household income and depending on, you know, this, it, in London it's a little bit more than outside of London of course. But there is, you reach relatively quickly a level where each additional pound of income has absolutely no more bearing on, on your happiness or, 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 or on your good life. Also if you look at it negatively, it, that doesn't decrease your negative emotions at all after a certain level. And you can, you can add one more pound on it, you can add a million, you can add a billion, it has no more impact on, on your happiness. And also if you look at it from an uh, economics point of view, this is a statistic, it, it shows you, uh, this is actually a, uh, a slide from Japan from 1958 until about the year 2000. Here on the dotted line you see the real GDP per capita, so real, what, what you can really consume after inflation, and it grows dramatically. And here, it's the life satisfaction. So every year, people were asked to rate how happy generally am I with my life from one to four, and you see it's, this is a flat line. So depend, despite the fact that we get more and more stuff to consume, that we have more and more GDP per capita, real GDP per capita, after inflation, life satisfaction stays flat. And it continues like that, even if the new statistics, even until this year. And you can take every modern country, Western country, developed country, and it's exactly the same graph. So more stuff doesn't increase life satisfaction. So we know this on an individual basis, we know this from an from a overall basis. Then the question is, after a certain amount, why does additional money not lead to additional happiness. And there are really two reasons why. Reason number one is money is relative. And it's best maybe to show this with a little fairy tale. It's a Russian fairy tale. So a uh, Russian farmer finds a magic lamp and he rubs that lamp and out of that lamp comes a genie, a, a good fairy. And she says to the farmer, dear farmer, you have one wish what would you like to happen? And the farmer thinks about it for a moment and then he says, okay, my neighbor has a cow, I have no cow, I'd like that his neighbor's cow dies, that my neighbor's cow dies, drops dead. And that shows you a something, an emotional reaction which is totally stupid and that's envy. Uh, envy is something Despite the fact that we have more and more money to spend, envy kills the whole happiness effect of more money. And there's one guy who is actually here from London, John Stuart Mill. He said it very clearly, men do not desire to be rich, only to be richer than other men. <laughs> so this is one factor. Uh, money is relative and that's why additional money doesn't really generate happiness because the toxic effect of envy. And then there's a second reason. And the second reason is habituation. We get used to the stuff quite fast. So you buy a new car. You know, you buy a fancy Porsche or whatever. And in the first three months, it really gives you happiness. I mean, you enjoy driving this thing. You know, people are going to be envious of you and you, you kind of show it off. But after a while, after about three months, six months, there's habituation. You get used to it and then the effect is going to be zero. Unless you really consciously always meditate on, I bought this Porsche. But who does that? I mean, at the moment you drive that Porsche, your mind is going to be 
anywhere else anyway. It's going to be with the traffic. You're probably going to be on the phone. You know, your, your thoughts are with the company uh, or, or your studies or your friends, but you're not consciously thinking of the car. So uh, Daniel Kahneman actually researched this subject, and he came up with a great, word, great sentence. A, a, a brand new car or an expensive car, a luxury car, makes you happy if you consciously think about the car, not when you drive the car. Because when you drive the car, the car goes in the mental background and you get used to it.